Digimon Survive starts with absolutely beautiful music and artwork that lets you know there was soul and passion in the vision of this game. The visual novel and SRPG gameplay just conceptually flow together so well to bring life to the human Digimon partnership, which is this game's X Factor. But the shadow that lingers over this game is the lack in execution that leaves it feeling like its potential wasn't truly realized. The SRPG is the bulk of the gameplay, but a small portion of the game. You have to avoid getting hit in the back by orientating your Digimon's direction, but otherwise it isn't a very tactical position demanding game, even in the hardest fights. Instead, its system leans heavily into matchup based strategy. There's a type triangle, elemental weaknesses, and items that give techniques and customize the role you want that Digimon to fill. It's a fluid system that allows you to use your favorites and have a cohesive team that plays to their strengths. The game, however, doesn't push the player to explore this system and is only ever challenged to in hard mode during the last few fights of the game. For most of the game, brute forcing with a little thought is adequate for even the highest difficulty. The visual novel takes up most of the game's time and explores a dark story where the Digimon are actually called Kamanogami and mostly want to kill everyone. There are heavy themes of family and societal expectations told through psychological horror. This is a 22 hour game though, and literal hours are padded with redundant plot beats like the stupid amusement park where only a few things happen but it makes each one have like four identical conversations that amount to a bad filler episode. But let's talk about what really matters, what about the visual novel gameplay? Every now and then, you'll get one of two choices speaking with a character. Answer correctly and you get affinity with them, which have no plot influence but unlocks their later evolutions for their partner Digimon. Many of these are in limited action sections however, so talking to anyone but human partners are a design trap for some reason. Then there's Karma, which is a red choice, a yellow choice, and a green choice. Only the branch split changes the plot, and they're supposed to represent the spirit of vaccine, virus, and data type Digimon. Otherwise, your friends will say you're stupid and wrong every time you suggest something that will advance the plot in a different direction than they want to take you. Now, where this becomes fun is that your karma direction will determine your partner's evolution at each step. This creates the cohesive Ludo narrative that drives Survive's identity, and personalizes Agumon's deep evolution tree based on how the player treats others. This small idea expands the motif of the Digimon growing alongside their human partners, and mechanically expands Digimon collection while still emphasizing depth over quantity, something that is extremely hard to make satisfying in a monster battler. Agumon runs the show in this game, featuring an overpowered partner ability that is just an absurd buff for any of your partner Digimon, the widest evolution tree of partners, and a guaranteed availability in every battle in the game. The other partner Digimon unfortunately have very linear trees, and the only other Digimon with wide evolution trees are the wild Digimon called Free Digimon. But recruiting them is like pulling teeth, only for the reward to be a non-existent chance for them to join your team. Monster collecting is just not good in this game, but at least the niche of evolution trees lets you see up to 9 potential Digimon per rookie over the course of the game, so your best bet is to recruit a couple of rookies and grow them as you like over the course of the game, but you have to use a limited quantity item in order to do it, which encourages decision paralysis, so you're likely just going to go with a few favorites and customize their loadouts. Digimon Survive brings fresh role-playing concepts in a way that really helps craft its unique identity compared to other monster battlers, but chooses to pad its runtime with filler rather than expand any of its strengths. Role-playing has strong Ludo narrative and mechanical connection to the Digimon, but lacks player agency in the visual novel while trying to create the illusion of narrative choice. The SRPG battles emphasize tight matchups and party roles, but barely expects the players to utilize any of it. There's beauty, soul, and immersive personalization of Agumon wrapped in an engaging story, but surrounded by missed opportunities and extremely padded game time, leaving Digimon survive with a few great highs and many dull lows.